what's going on everybody welcome to the channel uh this is ben and today we're gonna do something just a tad different um there have been a lot of people who said they've enjoyed my painting tutorials um my spec map video uh, got a pretty great reception and so um, i've had some requests to paint a stock car for the upcoming daytona 500 and i thought i'd go ahead and do that but i wanted to do it a little differently i, I typically will paint a car uh, that is um, you know, team branded uh, with my team Dirty Torque, previously my team Mind Trick. Today, though, I want to merge two of my obsessions because this happens to be the day of the Rolex 24, which combines two of my favorite things, watches and uh, racing. And if you're a fan of racing, uh, there's a likelihood you're a fan of watches as well. Um, I, I'm going to show a couple here, kind of working from the bottom up. Uh, so from my personal collection, that's right, the bad boy, old Casio, it's a classic. Uh, working up that Casio chain, we've got the G-Shock. Uh, I've got a skeletonized uh, Swiss Fossil. Uh, let's see, we got the Nixon on the NATO strap. We got the, uh, there's a couple more here. We got the Seiko. Um, this is a special watch for me right here. This was actually my first um, watch that got me into the hobby. It's just a cheap fossil, but it'll always have a special place in my heart. For today, though, we're going to go with my favorite watch. Um, that's going to inspire today's paint. Uh, it's a wonderful American brand that has been bought by the Switch, uh, the Swatch Group. You'll have seen it in movies probably quite a lot. It's the Hamilton. Um, this happens to be the Hamilton Aviation Day Date. Um, if you go watch Interstellar, this is the very watch that Matthew McConaughey wears. So I'm going to do a Hamilton-themed car uh, for the Daytona 500. And, um, and so what I want to do real quickly is go get inspired. I'm going to open up Hamilton's website and kind of look at their brand identity a little bit. What colors do they use? Um, you know, what's their palette? What's their style um, a little bit? And then I'm going to steal those elements and use that to inspire my car. And so when I open this website, I'm seeing kind of a lot of grays, uh, sort of a muted pastel um, environment. Notice that all the buttons are this particular shade of orange. Uh, and, and just look at these freaking beautiful watches. Um, the one that I'm wearing right now is the... Um, uh, let's see, uh, Khaki Pilot Day Date, right? It's in the Aviation Club here. Let's see if that got it right. The names are always really confusing. Uh, watches, Khaki Aviation. Here we go. There it is. Um, so this is the watch I have on right now. I absolutely love it. I think my next watch is the Pan Europe. Um, P-U-R-O-P. Uh, I've been obsessing over this one for a while. And I really, really, really want it. Um, and I love this blue sunburst dial. But at any rate, um, big watch nerd, obviously. This is, I think, uh, the car that I want to make is going to be inspired by these guys. So let's figure out a couple of, of color pieces here that are going to inspire this car. Uh, what do we see? We see sort of a grayish uh, background. Uh, not white, but grayish. It's off-white. We have this consistent um, accenting, but not overwhelming uh, use of this orange and we have quite a bit of black, right? So I think those are going to be our main elements So let's start with a little technical thing. How can I find out exactly what colors these are? So what I'm going to do first is get my orange I'm going to go right click on that button and click inspect and you don't need to be able to I have some HTML uh, uh, In my in my professional world and so I can read a lot of this stuff You don't have to be able to though. The important thing is uh, Just go down here click on the item you want to look at and then look, look for this sort of box that describes how that's built, right? Padding, margin, border. You don't need to know what that stuff means. All you need to be able to do is go down and look at the background colors, right? Here's my off-white because that's what they're using for the text. And here, I'm sorry, for the, the, for the border. So the border matches the color of the, um, of the uh, back of the page. And then the background color, right? So that's the orange. So notice I've got 244, 122, 85, and 255. 255 255 actually that's solid white that is solid white it looked off white so so these are going to be a couple of the colors that i use to sort of start and if i want to see what this off gray is i'm just going to go up there and hit inspect and now notice what i'm doing see when i when i hover over this section i'm seeing that area and i can see that that's 85 85 85 so these are going to be some of my colors now I've already gone and downloaded uh, the car. So let's go open up the, uh, the template here and let's get started. I always like to start with a couple of instructional steps to help new folks get going. If you're not sure how to, um, how to get the car into the sim in a way that allows you to paint it easily, let's, let's walk through those steps real fast. Uh, the first thing you'll wanna do of course is go online and download the template. You can see I've already done that here, but it's down at the bottom when you go into the paint car area. 
And then what you want to do is go make sure that car is updated, of course. I don't think you can download the template without updating the car. Um, but I'm going to go test drive this particular car. Um, and I'm just going to do it at the centripetal circuit, okay? And I'm going to do this noon, daytime. I always do this stuff at noon, daytime. Uh, so we're going to clear this, and we're going to go for the car. Oop, that's the wrong button. That's why you don't do things live, kids. I'm going to go to the car, please. And I'm going to change out of the Corvette because I painted that last. In fact, I might show you that. Uh, Monster. Got all your cars here. And I'm going to pick the Ford that I'm going to be painting. And then continue to the track. It should be centripetal at sunset. That's not what I want. Made another mistake. No big deal. I think I was taking pictures of the uh, Corvette in anticipation of the... Uh, Daytona 500. I'm sorry. The, what was it? The iRacing 24-hour uh, of Daytona is what we just ran. Uh, and now we'll hit continue, finally. And I'm going to load up in the sim. This will only take a sec. If you're watching, let me know how the audio is. Am I coming through clearly and all that? Do I need to turn up the microphone or anything of that sort? Aerials. Well, hey there, Bryce. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are we doing? I am painting a car. What are you up to? Dad. I'm not your dad, kiddo. If I were, I'd tell you to go to your room. Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to do is take it out of full screen mode and just... Uh, <laughs> failed tech. Wow. Uh, so, let's go to the garage and put on a baseline setup. Uh racing setups, baseline, that should allow me to get in the car. Interesting. Uh, iRacing setups, I don't know. Um, Dover? Hey, so this, this track's just like Dover, as you can tell. And I'm just going to get in the bouncy car here and let it idle for a minute. And while that's idling, I'm going to go back to GIMP and hit File, Export As, and then I'm going to find my folder. It's, it's always in the Documents folder. Um, you should have an iRacing folder within there. And then a Paint folder. And then for every car that you have, um, for every car that you've raced, uh, you should have a, um, a folder for it. This is the Monster uh, uh, Mustang here. And so I'm going to change this to car underscore 147818.tga. Now that's my number. Your number is going to be different. The way you find yours is within the iRacing application. Go to your profile, and there it is, right? So you'll you'll name your car, car underscore, and then your number, dot TGA, right? That's how you export it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and export it that way. It's going to ask me a quick question. Export. And now, if I go back to the car, exit out of it, and just pause the replay, importantly, with the driver in the car, right? With the driver in the car. The driver has to be in there. If you do this without the driver in there, the car will not refresh. The paint is actually linked to your driver, not the car. I'm still not that loud. Okay, thanks, Bryce. Um, I'm going to go into Windows settings real quickly here. Open sound settings and device properties. And let's turn this bad boy up. Okay, is that any better? Do I need to just get closer to the microphone? Testing, test, test, test a -roo. All right. So now you can see here that because I refreshed it with the driver in the car, I've now got a blue car because in GIMP, I've got a you know blue car. So if I go in here and turn on my wire, put that white wire on, and I just go back up and hit export, right? Or I'll just, I'll be hitting control E throughout. It's a quick shortcut. So I'm just going to hit control E. And now I should have a white car, or excuse me, a blue car with white wireframes right on okay so that's how you get sort of staged to paint um, and it's important as you're going through this that you um, it's important as you're going through this that you save your actual GIMP file from time to time you want to make sure that in case you have a computer crash or something that you don't lose your work uh, sometimes these things can take hours so I'm gonna hit save as and I'm gonna call this my Hamilton uh, Mustang dot xcf and i'm going to put that in sort of my working folder that i have 
so I've got a I've got a paint file out here somewhere, and let's just put it in the modified. Here we go. So monster Mustang, and I'm going to hit save. So now I've got a working file that I can continuously save to so that I don't ever lose my work. Now, let's get to painting. So we're going to steal that orange, and uh, we know we have a white, and we know we have sort of a light gray. Um, I'm going to start by painting the car the light gray. So remember what we did here. We went to the website, we clicked inspect, and I can make sure I'm focused. See how that shaded up here? I, I'm focusing on that area, and I can see that this is my gray. 85, 85, 85. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is go down to my base, and I'm gonna paint that 85, 85, 85. Right, and now I've got that light gray. And so I'm going, notice this. So I'm going to now paint that bad boy and hit export. And now I should have a light gray car with a white wireframe. Now the white wireframe is gonna be kind of hard to work with. So let's change its color to something crazy that won't be on my paint at all, uh, which makes it just better to work with. So I'm gonna zoom in a lot here so that I can really see this up close. And then I'm gonna scroll up, find my wire layer, make that the active layer. And then I've got a great tool up here called select by color. So I'm going to use select by color and I'm just going to click somewhere on that wireframe and you'll see what happened here. It's selected all of that white wireframe. Now I'm, I'm going to go in here. Actually, let me do this. I'm going to save this color for, for use later. So while I've got this color selected, I'm going to push this little arrow and that makes it available for me to quick select later. Uh, for the moment though, I'm going to grab just like a silly green um, that I'm going to use for my wireframe, sort of a limeish green. There we go. How about that? And then I'm going to take my paintbrush. I'm going to go large on it, go big or go home, and I'm going to paint just the wireframe. So because I selected only the wireframe, now only the wireframe is green. So if I unselect, see now I've got a uh, a grayish whitish car, an off white car with uh, a green wireframe. So that'll make it easier to work with um, as I'm as I'm working uh, within the car. Get used to it in Control-Z, by the way. You'll make little finger twitches that'll screw things up. All right, so now let's start to think about the layout of this car. Um, I don't think I'm going to go over the top here. Uh, I think I'm basically going to do a three-tone car where I have a bottom uh, sort of skirt that's orange and then that's going to fly up and sort of coalesce maybe on the trunk um, and then I'm going to do a top one of the same orange that's going to sort of follow this body line uh, where the Mustang fake intake suit or exit scoop is um, I'm going to do that and it's going to meet back and I think I'm going to incorporate black at that point with a second up and across that's going to overlap so I've got sort of an image in my head that's hard to describe but let's start doing this so let's stage for the actual paint job. Um, and keep in mind, spec maps come last. So if, you, if you're watching this video later, not live, and you wanna see the spec map part, then come back later um, or skip ahead and, and you'll see um, the spec map part. But it's gonna take us a while to first get the car's paint job uh, taken care of. So the first thing I like to do is delete the car patterns because if you use them, that's just cheating. You're not being creative. Um, I guess you are, but you know, come on. Let's, let's do it right. I like to create two folders, logos and graphics. The graphics are the swoops and swooshes and boxes and ovals and shapes that you make to give the car character. The logos are the things that you do, uh, the things you put on the car uh, to brand it, right? That's your team logo, or the, in our case, the Hamilton logo uh, that we're gonna be using a bunch. So let's go ahead and start creating some of the broad strokes of our graphics. I'm going to zoom in on the right side, and it's pretty much always easiest to just use one side, um, one side at a time, and then sort of duplicate things over. I'll show you that in a little bit. So I'm going to create a folder within my graphics folder called left, and then within my graphics folder, I'm going to create another subfolder. So we've got layers and a hierarchy here of, um, we'll call it door area, right? Now probably, this always works differently for every car but I'll probably have one later that's gonna be um, like a, you know quarter panel or fender or whatever, right? 
In fact, I'm going to recall this lower door. And then within that, I'm going to create a new layer. And so uh, left skirt. All right, so now we're going to trace out, we're going to create a selection that will be the shape of my, excuse me, orange accenting that we're going to have over there. Um, so remember, we don't have the orange color. Right now we've got the green, but we don't care about that yet. Um, I'm going to go up here and grab uh, this tool. It's called the Paths tool, and we're going to create a custom selection, which is going to be our, um, this is going to be our, our orange accenting down at the bottom. So we're going to take our, we're going to just pick a line that we like. And I think I like, uh, let's see, I think I like this line here. We'll, we'll see how it goes. And I'm just going to draw uh, as straight a line as I can and move it around that follows that, that green body line, right? And then I'm going to go down here and over here and then over here. And then I'm going to hit shift V on my keyboard and that closes that loop and creates the selection. Now, what I need to do is go grab the orange, right? So I'm going to click into my green here, get ready to select my orange, but first I need to go get those values. So I'm going to right click on the button, inspect, and it's 244, 122, 85. So 244, 122, 85. All right, what did that give us? I don't think that got, got us there. Um, 0957. Let's see if got, that gets us there. Sometimes the way they do things online are a little funky and they have transparencies in place. Um, what was that? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. There's another way we can do this if we end up not getting the correct color. I'll show you. Uh, oh, here we go. They've got the HTML code out there too. So I'm just going to use that. F47A55. There it is. Okay, so now we've got our orange, which I'm also going to save for later so that I've got quick access to it again. Go back into my paintbrush tool and paint my little side skirt. Okay, hit export. And now I should have a white car with green grid and an orange stripe. Oh, this is on the right side. Was I looking at that wrong the whole time? Call this right. It's okay. It doesn't matter which side we paint first. Most of the NASCAR or most of the cars in iRacing have the left side on the bottom and the right side on the top of the of the uh, template, and so I've just sort of gotten used to that. But it doesn't matter. We'll start with the right side. Let's turn off our wireframe and see how we feel about this. Is that the right line to follow? Yeah, I think so. I think that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm tempted to use the um, this curved line here. But I think that's okay like that. Yeah. Now, let's go down here and we'll create another little group. And we'll call this the rear quarter panel. And within that, a layer. And it's important that as you go, you're careful about your labeling. That you do a good job labeling. Um, just because you later will need to make tweaks. And if you don't have well-labeled uh, layers, then it takes you forever to find what you're looking for. And I also like to create as many layers as possible, which makes it sound more complex than maybe it needs to be. But you can always merge layers if you want to. If you give yourself lots of layers, though, you give yourself a lot of flexibility regarding... Um, moving things around. If you want to just slightly change the placement, like if I wanted to move this upward swoop forward a little bit, then I could just move that layer without having to repaint onto the same layer here, right? So hit export again, and we'll just see if I hit a good spot. Yeah, it's not bad, it's not bad. Okay, I'm changing my mind on something though. I, I, think, I, I think I want to uh, do black. I think I want to do black for the front area instead of instead of orange to give it a little more dimension. Um, so what I'm going to do now is go look at my front fender. I'm going to unselect what I've got. Let's go look at this front fender area. And let's do another group. Right fender. And another uh, right fender um, black. Let's do that. Or you know what? What's that dark gray that they had? Didn't they have a dark gray on the website? So we might be creative here. 
We'll start with black, and if we want to change it to a gray, we'll change it to a gray. All right, so what I'll do now is turn my wire back on, and I'm going to draw another path that sort of follows just above this top body line and follows the car all the way back. And so this will be one of those areas where we need to be really familiar with the body lines as it curves over that fender. Because what I want is for, I want it to come, let me expose the mouse cursor here. I want it to come over here and sort of follow the, window, the, the wheel well and then go straight back following sort of this line here. Um, mm, I don't know. Let's, let's experiment with it. We can always move things around. So I'm going to start from the back because that's where the most, uh, most curvature is. And you'll see this right here. See that line with how it spiders out right there. That's this. And by the way, I'm using WASD, Control and Alt to move the camera around. So just experiment with that. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is follow this to about no I'm just gonna go straight through first and just see how it looks overall no absolutely not control Z hmm follow that line around to there and then following 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 I want to follow this line. And I think I want to come... I think, I, I think I'm changing my mind on this. What I want to do instead is... Let's change our tactic here. I think I want to do a more black top. I think I'm going to do a matte black top to this car. Um, so with that in mind, let's um, okay, how about we just paint this area? It's going to start right about there, I think, when we come through the fender well straight back and probably meet yeah right there at the crease so come up a little higher here that ought to be pretty darn close and then we'll close off um, cl just close off we'll paint the whole top area What's beautiful about this approach is if I decide to, I can paint over this with some other color. If I wanted to go orange on top, but with a black accent on the bottom, we'll see if it's overpowering or not. But I've got basically this big black area that I'm going to now paint. Or I've got this big area that I'm now going to paint black. And let's see how that looks on the car. Okay. To help get the full idea, I'm going to go ahead and just grossly paint the top of the car and the trunk black. So I'm going to unselect and I'm going to create a new graphics folder, right, called top. And then within that, I'm going to do top black. Okay? So this way I'm not painting on the same layer. I can make the I can do this experiment and if I don't like it, I can just change it later. So I'm not even going to use a selection on this because I'm just being kind of large and gross at it. As long as I don't, you know, overspray, I'm okay. You got to watch out for they nest in um, stuff like this that we want to make sure we... I'm going to go ahead and paint over that. That we want to make sure we don't paint unless we know what it is, right? Um... If you paint stuff and you don't know what it is, later on when you find that you've got a splash of paint somewhere, sometimes it's hard to figure out you know, where you screwed up. So I just try to be pretty precise with my painting um, so that I'm not 
having to fix problems late in the paint. If you're careful up front, then you're, uh, you're safer later on. Okay. Okay, so what I'm worried about right now is when I get to the Hamilton logo later, um, the Hamilton logo's got this orange square to it. Um, and when I get to that, I've got to make it to where... I've got to make it to where that doesn't clash with the orange background. So I'm starting to second guess myself on the, um, on the idea of that upward orange swoop. But I have an idea. How about we try this? Um, I think what we're going to try to do is this will actually give you a good, give me a good opportunity to show you one of Gimp's neat tools. I'm going to take my rear QP orange, um, a layer and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to do one that is a uh, rear QP orange black. Okay. And what I'm essentially going to do, I'm putting that one on top for the moment. Um, and what I'm essentially going to do is create a duplicate of it that is black in color. And so to do that with this layer selected, I am going to go to uh, layer, I'm sorry, colors, map, color exchange. Okay. And I'm going to grab my orange and notice what happened here. It basically selected all that and it made it black because that's the other color I have painted. If I want to change it to some other color like green or whatever, I can do that. In this case though, I'm going to use black and I hit okay. And now I've got a black swoop going up that I can move around independently of the orange one. See how that's moving underneath. I can move it independently of the orange one, which is kind of neato. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to take my, lower door, my skirt basically, and put that over the, um, the black one. I stacked it on top of the, uh, of the quarter panel so that the orange line stays consistently over the black down there. And now we're kind of talking. I kind of dig that. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to carry the orange up into the bumper here. I might even put it higher. Uh, boom, boom. We'll see. We'll experiment with that a bit. But I think that's starting to come together. I think I should also put a black um, skirt like trim down here and follow it up there and maybe move this a tad back. So let's do some of that. I'm now going to let's see, go to my quarter panel. Oh, that's where it is. And I'm going to move that back one click. Yeah. And let's patch up our black paint here. Let's erase our overspray. If you clean up as you go, it's like cooking. If you clean up as you go, it's way more convenient later. Um, let's turn off our wireframe and just sort of get a feel for that at the moment. Hmm. I think I'm going to come down on the uh, right side door, the fender, to match the, uh, the body line of that air scoop. And yeah, now we're talking. Okay, I'm not hating this. In, in a minute, what I'll do is I'll carry this stripe up and over so that it provides a divider and it gives me flexibility to do stuff on the back of the car that's different. But first, I think I'm going to create an orange barrier here and then a black barrier here just to give it that little bit of extra character and dimension, a little more complexity. So to do that, I'm not going to create a new line here because it'll be really hard to make it um, the same, what I'll do is the same thing I did for the uh, quarter panel. I'm just going to duplicate uh, the fender layer and I'm going to do a color exchange, right? Once you figure out these tools, um, you can uh, you can just use them over and over. It's, it's pretty great. Um, so I'm going to go from black in this case to orange, right? And I'm going to put my orange one underneath my black one. I move to the layer and I'm going to move that layer just down a couple clicks and then I'll take the black one and move it up a couple of clicks and we should have a nice little border 
sort of following the body line. Hey, now we're kind of talking. But I'm going to remove the back portion of that. So let's go over here and we'll click our erase tool, make sure we're on the right layer, and kill all of that. I think I just turned on voice recognition. No thanks. Uh, something real quick, let's take our decals and put them on top of everything. Uh, car decals, yeah, that's the one. Let's move all that up over the graphics. So now we've got all the little Ford logos and our NASCAR logos and all that jazz happening here. Hey Mustafa, how you doing buddy? How's the wonderful land of Turkey? We're painting some NASCAR. All right, in marketing, they call it FPO, for placement only. I am going to grab real quickly a Hamilton logo and drop it on the car and see um, and see how we like it. And I'll show you something real quickly on this monitor. Um, you know, I've got a folder for every car that I've ever painted, which is a lot of them. And then, and then I've also got what I call an assets folder where I've got just lots of stuff that I've used in the past. And I have a Hamilton folder with the Hamilton logo. Um, and so I'm just going to grab that and drop it in. And so now I've got a Hamilton logo that I'm going to move into my logos folder. I'm going to create a uh, layer group in here um, called right. And then I'm going to drop this in and I'm going to call this one QP uh, Hamilton, right? So now that I've got this, notice we have a contrast problem, right? Uh, that the Hamilton logo that I have has dark text and I need it to have lighter text. So I've, I've got a weird problem here because um, I've got the, my temptation is to turn the text, um, is to make this area lighter again, maybe use the orange back here. Um, but I don't want to do that at the end of the day because that would conflict with the orange square, which is sort of the signature part of, um, that's sort of the signature part of their logo. Um, I also have a problem here in that this logo is smaller than what I'd like it to be. And one, one thing you never want to do to make clear stuff is, uh, is make a logo larger than it is natively. And so we'll have to go find another logo in a minute. Um, in fact, we'll probably have to go find another logo now. It's gonna delete that layer since it doesn't work for me. And let's go uh, Hamilton Watch logo. Oh, I'm gonna put transparent and see if we get lucky and find one that's white or at least very large and I can change. Um, there we go, that's not bad. Uh, so I always open that image in a new tab and then download it. And I don't know if this is going to work. That doesn't look like it has a transparent background. Let's go look at it. Stay organized kids. Let's drop this on. I bet you that's, yeah, that's not going to work at all. So not that one, thank you very much. Uh, back to the Googs. What I need is just kind of a big one. I can do a color swap to make it, to make it better. 600 by 600, 500 by 500. Oh, now we're talking, um, but no, that, well, I think I can make that work. Let's save this one real fast because it's nice and big. Ha 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 ha. NASCAR is best. Are you going to be running the Daytona 500, Mustafa? How'd you guys finish, by the way, in the in the Daytona 24? Um, I don't think I noticed your finishing position. It was really weird to see a mine track car out there that I wasn't a part of. Mm, this is this is not the greatest quality image, so I'm gonna skip on that one as well. Sometimes this is the hard part because you know it's not your brand. If if I were working for a company here doing a paint for it, I would have high quality uh, imagery to work with, and so this this part's kind of tricky. Eight hundred by one forty six, but it's not transparent background. 
Hey, now we're talking. This looks great. Um, yes, yes, yes. This is exactly what we're looking for. Save as the big Hamilton. The big boy. Now we're talking. Okay. So now I've got a good Hamilton. And before I bring this thing down in size, what I want to do is change our colors, right? Um, and this might be tricky because the canvas size is so big. So we'll ex I'm not sure exactly how this is going to happen, but we'll experiment with it real fast to find out what happens. Um, what I'm worried about happening is when I do a color swap here to make this, uh, this off white, um, I'm worried about it um, not catching the stuff that's off the canvas. So let let's find out what happens. We'll learn together on this one. So I'm going to go in here and do our mapping tool, our color exchange, and I'm going to go for black. Or actually what I'll do is I'll make sure I'm being precise. I'm going to pick that particular shade of black. It might be different. And I'm going to change that to our off white. And let's see if that affected the whole layer or not. Yes, it did. Sweet. This is exactly what I need. Um, so I'm now going to sort of save this because it's nice and big. What I like to do is save a hero version of logos. Um, so that I can reuse it later and later, later on without having to do, um, without having to remap colors and stuff. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to put it up here and I'm going to call that Hamilton hero. And now I'm going to work with the one, uh, that I've got exposed down here. I'll just make that one invisible and I'll work with this one. I'm going to use my resizing tool and take this guy and bring her down in size. Notice I'm using the corners, right? So I'm maintaining its aspect ratio. And I'm going to drag that little guy down here for placement only. And we're not going to tilt it at this point. I want to just see how it looks straight, but I think it's going to need to be tilted. So we'll just move it around there. I think this is going to overlap with the fender or with the um, body lines too much. You know what? That's not terrible. I think we're a little too big. Um, so we'll bring that down a tad there, bring it up a tad there, and just take a look, export, and look. I'm not a child. What you talking about, Bryce? What did I do? Oh, did I make a childish joke? That's, I can see how that would that could happen. It's happened once or twice in my life. Hey, we are getting there, kids. We are getting there. I do love Hamilton watches. God, I want that pan Europe so bad. In fact, let's go ogle at it for just a sec. See, there's my watch. There's this one. But what I want to see again is that pan Europe because, oh, God, look at that thing. Look at that bad boy. And it comes with this amazing NATO strap um, with the uh, it's just this color combination. God, I want that. This is a racing-inspired watch. The, the original pan Europe was a 1970s um chronograph used by race car drivers. Um, and uh, so it's just really appropriate in this in this world. And there is a chronograph version of it. It's just more expensive. Um, I mean, this is already uh, US dollars, something like a $1,400 watch. Um, uh, and so I want it though. <laughs> it's my next watch. <laughs> I just haven't, I've set myself a couple of things that I want to do um, that are going to allow me to do that. When I make a big watch purchase, I, uh, I, I, I don't just do them willy nilly. I, I make myself meet certain goals and thresholds and then I go buy the watch. Okay. So let's go back to our car. Let's look at her and say what we've got now is kind of a neat design happening. I feel like, I feel like the, the matte black that we're going to do later is going to help with, with some overall character. Um, but I think one of the things I can do right now is add some orange back here. And so I think I'm going to think I'm going to take this up a bit and then carry that through to the corner where the bumper meets the quarter panel. So let's let's go back down here to our layers for the rear quarter panel and do an orange QP patch. And we're going to go back to our paths tool, which I can never remember. The logos just aren't great. Um, oh, here it is. Uh, the paths tool. And I'm going to start from this corner. And I'm going to end up here. Mm 
Yes, sir. Now, because we saved our orange earlier, it's easy to get back to it. And I'm going to paint a Rooney. And more paint. Now when I hit export, I should have a nice swoop there. Let's see how she looks. Yeah, it's not bad. And I think what'll be nice is if I... Oh, actually, I kind of did it too high. Look at that. That's surprising. And look at the wire. That doesn't make sense. Oh, that's why. I'm going to the end. Okay, easy mistake to make. What I'm going to do now is... Uh, I'm going to hit Control z a bunch and get rid of that and try again, but this time coming from the corner of the actual car. That was a rookie mistake, Ben. Rookie mistake! Let's try that again. The paths tool is one of your best friends. If you don't know how to use it yet, I use it. And I haven't even done any of the fancy stuff yet. The fancy stuff is when you curve uh, using the paths tool. All right, how do we feel about that? Let's turn off the wire and see how we feel about that. I don't know if I love it. Maybe if I come at a more, maybe if I leave more, um, sorry, it's hard to say it out loud. You know, this stuff is, anytime you're doing anything even vaguely artistic, and I am not calling myself an artist, it's really hard to describe what you're talking about. You just sort of do it. Um, oop, I'm in the wire. See I, what I just did there? I picked the wrong uh, layer to paint in. Um, then I call that patch. There it is. Um, boom, 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 doo, doo. And let's turn our wire back off. Sprite! What's up, Optic? How you doing, man? What is happening? Thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying. Um, hmm. I think I kind of like that. I, I think some logos will... We'll add the the stuff we need here. And also, you know what would be good? Is if we do another color mapping swap and have a an off-white um, have an off-white divider line there. Kind of like we did with the orange here. We'll do an off-white off line here just to give it that little bit extra pop. So, I oh, you know what? Since I've still got the selection, we'll do this in a different way. I'll teach you something differently. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to leave this selection active. And I'm going to do a new layer for... Um, white QP patch, you know, similar naming conventions. And I'm just going to switch over to my off white that I, that I have. And I'm going to paint that same layer, but just sort of the top. I don't need to be as precise on this one because what I'm going to do is drop it below the orange and then move it up. Oop. Need to move it up. You know what? I'm going to point this out real fast up here. Um, if I, if I have this one selected, that's moving the selection itself. So if I want to paint something and then move the selection around, I can do that. Um, in this case, though, what I want to move is the actual layer that I have selected. And so I'm going to use that. This is something that if you don't know that, you can really frustrate yourself later by not understanding why something isn't moving the way you want it to move. So now that I've shown you that, let's uh, erase the overspray. Which I should have just not done the overspray. Let's erase that. Two-tone going to be good. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think so. And let's erase this overspray, too. I think what I want to do is, is bring this back to match that body line or that, uh, that paint line. So I'll do a little more of this. And I'm just leaving the selection up so that I can use it again if I need it. Um, and then I'll, I'll be more precise about this erasing in a sec. One of the downsides about GIMP is that it's not vector, it, it does actual uh, pixels. Um, and so you, it's really hard to avoid jagged lines sometimes. But I think I'm pretty happy with that concept. And let's just finish erasing from this blue area, the overspray. And now, I think we're well on our way to having kind of a cool car here. 
Let's continue uh, building out the logo ideas. Um, let's find the Goodyear logo and get that on top. Where's that at? Color change decals, probably? Because I buried it earlier. We'll put that up here with the car decals. Did that expose our Goodyear logo from the front? Yes, it did. So iRacing has different logos that they include automatically, and the Goodyear logo is one of them. A lot of times, tire brand logos are... Uh, are are uh, you know the best and yes uh, so optic i i was intending i am intending later on to take this area um and turn it into sort of a matte chrome I'll, I'll show you a little bit what i'm talking about the car that i did for um uh for our daytona 24 was the c7 and you can see how i didn't do chrome i did matte right um, and, and I really, really dig that. Uh, and so I think I'll do more maybe of that. Uh, maybe not quite as chromey as this more matte. Um, but you can kind of get the idea of, of what I did with the spec maps there. And if you're, if you're wanting a really detailed spec map tutorial, I don't know if you've seen my, my tutorial on that. I, I go into the details on how spec maps work. Um, I found that iRacing's, um, a tutorial that they released that Drew taught just wasn't really good enough when it came to teaching people how it works as opposed to just, Hey, do this. You know, sometimes training is about, uh, training and learning is about fundamentals and concepts before it's about, um, uh, before it's about the how to. So let's think about other brands that don't compete with Hamilton, right? I can't have Rolex on this car because Hamilton is a watch brand. So I'm now going to go back to my folder. O things and, and uh, see what other assets I have that would complement this paint scheme and, and also complement Ferrari, right? We want it to be something that makes sense. I'm sorry, not Ferrari, uh, NASCAR. I was looking at the word Ferrari um, that complements the event uh, or the fact that I'm iRacing, uh, you know, tools that I use like caps, for example. In fact, caps is probably a good one here. Yeah, let's do caps down here. So I'm just going to drop this in. Actually, let me first get to my logos. So my logos folder, and I'm going to go to my right folder and drop this in. And you can see how because I selected the folder beforehand, I now have um, it dropped into the right place. So it's easy to stay organized if you just take that step first. We'll scale that little guy down, and we'll have to come down some more on it. But let's put caps down here. Scale that down a bit more. I probably need to turn this to match that swoop. Yes. Okay. That's not bad though. I kind of like it. Um, let's okay. Now what I like to do to try to get more precise, um, more precise uh, angles here is I'll zoom in really close. I'll, I'll put it against the line that I want to match and then I'll turn it. Uh, and then I'll, I'll kind of move it around and pick a point like I can use the top of the letters, right? The A P P S and say, all right, what needs to happen? The S probably needs to come up one pixel, right? We got really close with our gross and then I'll use this angle button here to move things one click by one click. And then I'm going to take that and move it down, kind of get it centered. Export and see how she looks. Mm, needs to be higher. Not bad. Okay, I kind of like the way this car's coming together. Yeah, I was thinking about doing matte um, on the top. Uh, I did, um, you know, an, an, uh, I was thinking about the matte black, but I don't know. I don't want to overdo the spec maps. I like some shiny, um, but I don't want to overdo the uh, the spec maps. Hey, what's going on, Caleb? Uh, Caleb, how are you, man? Thanks for thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying. Okay, so I think one thing I want to work on over here maybe is the Goodyear logo, um, just because it's I don't like the way it's overlapping the orange. Uh, so I'm probably going to mess with that in a minute. Um, but first, I think I want to do a black accent line down here to juxtapose, you know, black down here and then black going up just to sort of break things up and give it that little more dimension. So let's go do that. 
Now we're going to do more of the color exchanging stuff that we did a minute ago. So if you didn't get to see that, then then check this out. This is a really cool way of of um, of recreating the exact same shape and changing its color without any of the pixelation that tends to happen with um, with GIMP. Um, so what I want to do is take this right skirt layer that I've created. I'm going to duplicate it, and then I'm going to take the duplicate and I'm going to change it from orange to black. So right skirt black is what I'm going to call it. I'm going to put it underneath. Actually, no, I'll leave it on top for the purposes of the instruction. I'll change that afterwards. Um, with that layer selected, I'm going to go colors, map, color exchange, and I'm going to pick that orange that I'm using and see what happened there. It, it said, okay, all that orange, I am going to change to black. If I wanted that to be some other color, I could change it to that other color, right? In this case, I'm going to use black. And I'm going to hit okay. And then I'm going to drop that below the orange layer. And I'm going to come up just a little bit. There we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like it. And I'm, I'll fix this in post, <laughs> as it were. Um, and, and that's all there is to changing, you know, that sort of thing. And I'm also going to do the same thing uh, here, but I'm going to do it thicker, right? Uh, so let's find that layer. That should be this one. Yep. Having lots of layers in this way, man, it really helps. Um, all right, so we're going to duplicate that layer. And we're going to do the exact same thing, um, except I'll go ahead and drag it down first. Oops, I dragged it out of the folder. But we're going to go colors, map, color exchange. And we're going to take our orange and turn it into black, which is the default color. And then I'm going to move it forward a little bit and see what's happening there. What I want to kind of do is a stair stepping where this is about maybe half the, dis the the width of this and then that's maybe double, right? So it's just a, think of it like the golden ratio or the Fibonacci sequence, right? Just a graduated uh, color difference from one to the next. And now that I've got that, I'm going to go back to the black um, that I did here for the skirt. And I'm going to erase this offending overlap and we'll go export that and see how she looks. I think I might need to come up a little bit on the, yeah, I'm going to come up a little bit on that black line there. So uh, where was that? The skirt, skirt black. I'm already on it. We're going to come up maybe three or four clicks. You guys going to be watching the, uh, uh, the race today, Daytona 24 real world starts in about an hour. I was, I'm hoping I can finish this paint in time, um, uh, to watch the start. Sometimes my paints take about three hours, but NASCAR templates are pretty simple. Once you've got a theme starting to emerge, they're pretty easy. I'm debating whether to do another black line up here, but I feel like it's maybe starting to get too busy. Um, and I like the I like the um, the differences that come into play there, you know, of, of orange on white and and um, black on white. So I think I'm going to leave that as is. I'm going to turn my attention now to the front and we'll start by just going gross and doing it in all white. I'm sorry, all black. So we're going to create, of course, a new folder under our graphics folder. We're going to call it front very cryptically. Do a new layer. Uh, bumper black. And it's likely we'll have some orange accents happening up here. I just need to kind of look at the, uh, the wireframe and see... Um, and see what we think. Why isn't that drawing? Why isn't that drawing? Do I have a, I don't have a selection on. I'm in there. Why aren't you drawing? Okay, confusion attacks. I'm gonna hit save real fast just in case I'm having a weird computer problem. What have I done? wrong. Oh, I see what it is. <laughs> I haven't selected black like a dumbass. Uh, there we go. Uh, if you want to paint a color kids, you kind of need to, you know, choose the right color. Um, now we're talking. Sorry about that. Brain fart. We're moving fast. And we're breaking things. Running with scissors. All right. So I've painted the front black and now let's go take a look at her. Hmm. Not bad. Um, okay, so I think probably what I want to do here. 
I think I'm going to put my name on the bumper. Uh, no, I'm not actually, because I'm going to put this paint on trading paints. Um, I want a splash of orange down here, and I'm thinking about doing sort of lipstick, like you see a lot on the Aston Martins. I'm thinking about doing lipstick around here, but I don't think it'll look good on this car. Um, and I haven't figured out at all what I'm going to do on top, whether it'll be stripes or just, you know, one solid color uh, or what. Sometimes solid colors look great. Oops, uh, turned off my camera tools. Okay, I think I have an idea for the hood, for the bonnet. I might even do a full orange bonnet. I don't know. Okay, we'll start by doing just a little... Um, just by sort of continuing our side skirt, but finer across here. And this doesn't need to be super precise. Um, we'll just go straight across. And I think what we'll do is match it up to the bottom of that opening. Bumper splitter orange. And we'll grab our orange here and just paint across. Easy peasy. Turn off our wire and see what we think about it. What are you looking for on Reddit? Oh, oh, uh, Bryce, I'll show you a tool, man. I'll put something in WhatsApp for you uh, for the uh, for the Daytona, Daytona 24. Um, Mike showed me a uh, a website that works really well. You know, just open up an incognito browser and uh, and go to town. It should be on there, I would think. I won't do it on the stream, obviously. I don't want to get you know sued. I don't want the FBI to come and knocking. That might be enough right there. What I, sometimes with NASCAR paints, especially, I sometimes think less is more, um, and and you don't want to over design it. You don't want to get too ornate uh, because it's a simple sport. I mean, it's a super complex sport to do well, but uh, the um, the concept is really simple, right? Go fast, turn left, and sometimes I feel like people get too over the top with the paints, and it ruins sort of the spirit behind these cars uh, to some degree. Yeah, so let's change. Let's let's move our attention over to the bonnet, to the hood. All right, so I'm going to go back to my paintable area here, and I'm going to create a new graphics folder called the hood, and then within that hood, I'm going to do an orange inlet uh, thingamabob, and what I'm talking about by inlet is this body line here. Um, that sort of swoops into the car, right? It's a, it's an inlay. Um, and I think what I kind of want to do is, well, okay, this is going to give us an opportunity to show you how to do curves if you don't know how to do curves. Um, notice this body line here that curves down, curves around, and then back up the other side. What I am going to do is start here dead center on this guy, right? On this line. And I'm going to come down to here, right to there. And then I'm going to pick a spot here. And then I'm going to come up and grab this one. And this will make sense in a second. This is where we're going to get a little bit more advanced. All right. So what I've done is I've sort of selected some primary points. Like if you ever think about it, you ever watched um, Andy Serkis doing um, motion capture, right? They put little dots in his face and they're picking specific um, uh, movement points that that are that they extrapolate the rest from. We're doing something sort of similar to that. I'm going to use this line first as an example. I've picked a pivot point here and a pivot point here. And now what I want to do is grab the line itself and bend it to match this body line, right? 
And so I'm going to just take these little levers and manipulate this line around to where it follows that line as a curve. Instead of me having to do lots of little dot, 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 dot to create a jagged curve, I do that to create a smooth curve. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one. This is trickier, though, because it's so long. Um, and I'm just following this line, trying to follow it really accurately. It's tough. That's pretty darn close. Except I want this to be more of an angle there. And I'm going to bend this one to be a continuation. Right? Hopefully this is making sense. So I'm following that line. I'm going to bring this one down a little bit more. In a little bit more. Bring this over a little bit. And then I'm going to go back to my starting point and hit shift V to close that selection. And now I've got a curved custom shaped selection. That's advanced action stuff, man. Uh, yeah, Bryce, I'll send it in discord. Um, and now I make sure I'm on the right layer, orange inlet, and I'm going to just paint half of this, right? And I'm painting half of it, hopefully for obvious reasons, I'll be able to duplicate and flip this to make the other half, right? That way it's perfectly consistent from one side to the other. So let's export that, and what do we got? Hey, not too shabby, brother. Not bad at all, actually, I kinda like it. I like it. Okay, so what we'll do is go ahead and um, we'll flip this little guy. So I'm gonna flip the selection itself in this case. Uh, I'm gonna do a vertical flip, boom, and you can see what happened there. Let's take it up, oop, that was the wrong thing. I want to move the selection until it perfectly matches the other side and then just paint again. Nice. Now I know I've got a little black line there. I'll fix that in a sec. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's fix, actually, why don't we just come down a notch or two and then we'll paint in to fix the black line. Nice. All right. So now we have a little orange action happening on the on the hood that I may or may not carry into the, the roof. I don't know. Uh, probably not, to be honest. But I think what I want to do now is play with that shape and do some more of our off-white bordering um, that may or may not be chrome later. We'll see. Um, so I've got a shape here. I'm going to click none on. Um, I've got a shape here that I'm going to uh, duplicate and I'm going to move it just a bit. Oop, I need to move the layer and I'm going to do another color swap and make this one that white, right? So color exchange from the orange to white and hit okay. I'm going to drop that under the orange and I'm going to see if I can use it to create this sort of angled border. Um, of the original, kind of get an idea of what I'm doing there. Yeah. And then I'm going to duplicate it for the other side. And I'll just move it straight down. And I'm sort of eyeballing it. I can get more precise if I open up the, uh, the wire layer. Yeah. You know what? I kind of like the way this bad boy's coming together. Okay. Let's do some logo placements. Um, one thing I don't like about this, while I love these body lines, and I think this is actually kind of cool and, and different than other things that I've done, and most times with NASCAR, I'll paint the whole hood one color because I like to have the logo run the width of the hood. But I think in this case, what I'm going to do is... Um, I think in this case, what I'm going to do is take the logo 
and put it within this smaller area. Um, so I'm going to grab my hero. Remember earlier when we made our hero? Um, I've got that guy. and But you know what? I need that in black now, don't I? Hmm. You know, that I'm thinking about it, though. Uh, yeah, let's go back to our folder. What color did I download it in? Yeah, I thought so. It was originally black. So we'll bring that in in black. And we'll rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, we'll re-rotate it. <laughs> Sometimes you rotate stuff the wrong direction. Uh, 180. Rotate. And we're going to bring this little guy down in size. And I'm going to do this in a couple... I'm going to try a couple of different experiments here. Now, let's talk about centering. Um, notice how that's kind of ghosty, though. You know, it's not real solid. Um, I think I'm going to layer multiple uh, logos on top of one another. But let's center first. Um, wire. And we've got a central body line that goes down here. So I can grab from this ruler at the top and just pull down a, um, pull down a uh, guide that allows me to then grab my logo and see how it's got that little crosshairs that'll appear in the middle here. So those are crosshairs. That's the center of whatever the object you're dragging around is. Um, so I can drag it in there and scoop out and see how I look and turn off my wire again. And I think it's going to be too small and too high. Um, so we'll, and too, uh, what's the word? Opaque. But I think I'll be able to just duplicate it and merge it on itself and, and take care of that. And I think what we'll do here is some stacked logos probably to, uh, to fill in this area. Just various things, like maybe the event logo, uh, except I don't want Rolex on it. It's a competing brand, man. Uh, let's drop this into our logos folder and create a new hood layer group. And what, what, what I'm going to do is just duplicate this and put it on top of itself, right? That darkens it um, like so. But I hate it. Oh my god, I hate it. Um, how about we... It's a slightly different shade, isn't it? So why don't we change the um, the square there to uh, the whitish color? So let's color pick the square, which isn't quite black, and change it to our off-white. I didn't really do the trick at all, did it? Okay, I don't like that. Um, I'm going to delete this, I'm going to delete this, I'm going to delete this, and we're going to rethink it. Let's go back and look at our Hamilton logos. What other logo can we try here? Uh, I could go with this guy, just do white. Maybe I should have done a white um, hood inset with an orange pinstripe. That would give me the flexibility. That would give me the flexibility, wouldn't it? Hey, what's going on there, style man? How you been? Hello, hello, welcome. I'm trying to figure out my, my bonnet here. Um, and I don't know yet what I want to do. I'm trying to figure that out. But it's it's all about Swiss precision, though, man. I've got to be precise. I've got to get it right. Okay. Um, I'm going to see if this is a good image. It looks like it is. And I think I'm going to get... A little creative here. 
I'm going to save this one. No, no, different idea, different idea. What I'm going to do is use this one. I think this one might be too pixelated. Jeez, that's not a very high quality image. Um, minus 90, here we go, rotate. Well, we'll see how it looks. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to replace their box with my box. Um, and I'm going to do it in a different color. Even though that's kind of screwing with their branding a little bit, I, I still think it'll, it'll be okay. They'll be all right up at Hamilton. I don't think they'll be mad at me. So I'm just going to overwrite their box with my own. And then I'll fix the H, right? I mean, that's obvious. I hope that's obvious. If it's not obvious, then it should be obvious, sucker. Yeah. And now I'll do an H patch. And what I'll do is follow their Make sure I'm good and aligned here. Like so. I'm going to do some color picking. Not nose picking, color picking. Hello, Lancardo. I rolled the R. I don't know if that's correct in uh, Turkish or not, but I rolled that bad boy. I rolled it like a boss. Okay, let's see what that looks like on the car. Well, I guess it's the wrong size at the moment, isn't it? But I think this might work. Okay. So I'm going to bring this down in size to match. Oh, wrong layer. Uh, boom, boom. Oh, what I need to do here first is actually uh, merge these layers. Um, so I'm going to merge down, merge down. And so now instead of three layers working on each other, I'm, I've got one layer. How big is this damn thing? Oh, wow, that's huge. Let's do something real fast. Let's. I'm going to change the size of this layer because it's way too big. So what I'm going to do to do that, another little teaching moment here. I am going to take this massive layer that's mostly transparent and I'm going to crop it to the selection that I just made. Boom. Now I've got an easier layer to work with that hopefully I've exactly centered. If not, no big deal. I can tweak it. Let's go look at that. Oh, I need to patch the H some more. I didn't reckon I didn't notice the crossbar was also screwed up. I think that works though. Um, I think the idea works. Let's patch our H here. Uh, we need to kablam and that should fix that. Nice. Okay. I'm actually not unhappy with that. I think it's fine. This is fine. I kind of wish I'd made it a little bit bigger, but I guess I'm not too worried about it. And I've got some cleanup to do there at the top, but in general, I'm, I'm relatively happy with what's happening here. Although I have no idea how I messed up at the top there. Um, I mean, where did all this come from? Select, select none. Where's that coming from? Okay, it's not part of the hood. When you find a mistake and you have trouble finding it, this is where these layer groups really help, um, is in finding what it is that's been painted that's wrong. Um, and right now I'm struggling to do that. Uh, do, 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 do. It's not part of the rear quarter panel that got oversprayed or the right fender or the lower door. Where the hell is that coming from? I painted the car white, right? Does that mean it's not really painted? I... Hmm. 
this is killing me. I don't know where that's coming from. I haven't got a clue where these white blotches... Oh, did I accidentally move? Oh, that's what it is. I accidentally moved my black somehow. Um, when I was dragging some stuff around. I see. Okay. Let's fix that. Let's turn our wire on. Sometimes, man, you got to get all forensic and figure stuff out. So weird. Don't know when and how I did that. But it's alright. We're fixing it. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. And also patch it a little bit. Um, so we're going to go to top black. We're going to change this to black black. And we're going to patch this little section that didn't get got. And let's go back and look at this again. Turn off our wire. What do we think so far, guys? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Um, are we on the track to having a neato car? A cool car? A wicked neat car? Um, all right, let's figure out some other logos for the hood. Um, I think we, we chose caps in the back, so we'll do caps again up here as a sort of secondary sponsor. And we'll drop that into our logos hood folder. Notice how we're keeping organized here. Rotate it negative 90. And rotate a Rooney and bring her down in size. Still too big, obviously for a secondary sponsor. So we'll do that. And then maybe one more uh, secondary sponsor. Uh, let's see, Fuji, it's a good mountain bike brand that I like, JLab, uh, some Klingon action, um, Laserdisc, Mind Trip. Mm -hmm. How about Oculus? Do I have a good Oculus one? good to keep a library of logos that have worked for you in the past um, so that you can just, you know, go grab ones instead of instead of having to do Google searching all the time. Thanks, Bryce. I got some thumbs up. What would I'm going to make? Um, I'm going to make air horn, air horn noises now. So wah, 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 wah. Did I do it right? Did I did I do it like the kids do it? Did I make it wicked cool? I kind of like it. I do. I does. Okay. I'll be right back.
we're back. Um, let's keep painting this mamma jamma. Uh, all right. So I think we've got pretty good scheme going on now. Oh, we've got another problem here, though. What's that? Where's that white coming from? I have no idea. Oh, there. That's where it is. Okay, so let's find that and patch it, and then we're going to start messing with getting things um, transposed over to the other side. And once we have them transposed over to the other side, that's when we'll start working on our um, on our spec map stuff. And so if you haven't seen how to do spec maps, you're going to see it live. This won't be the most complex spec map um, uh, ever, but it should still, if you don't know that how it works, then this should help you learn how it works. If you really want to know how it works, check out the video that I did a few weeks ago that goes through great detail on on the reasons spec maps work. Um, that video has gotten a pretty excellent reception. All right. Okay. Now, how do I, you might be wondering, um, take all my logos from this side and put them on the other side? And how do I get this design without having to go recreate it from scratch again? Well, here's the trick. You've seen me duplicating layers already and you saw me flip this white pinstripe surround here. We're basically gonna do that for everything on the right. So this is why I did my door, my fender, my quarter panel, all those layers in groups in a hierarchy underneath the right one, right? So what I'm gonna do now is just duplicate that parent level of the hierarchy. Um, I'm gonna duplicate that whole thing and now you'll see it'll, it'll come in and write number one or something, write copy, there it is. And I'm just gonna call that left, okay? And then I'm gonna go into my flipping tool and I'm gonna make sure I'm selected on the, on the, the layer itself and I'm going to just click a Rooney it and notice how some stuff happened up here. So this isn't going to be perfect right off the bat. You have to go in and make it perfect to do. So I'm going to go to my wire and I'm going to bring this up. You can kind of see what's happening there. Neat, huh? Um, and I need to pick some, something to anchor to. I need to pick some spot of, of importance and I'm going to use this. Notice how the white line is right at, this corner. So if I match up that single point, then on the other on the other side, then the rest of it should be perfect. And so I'm just going to bring up this whole thing until the top of this is intersecting with that corner. And I'm going to turn off my wire and go check my work. And I think I see a problem there that we'll have to fix. Um, but that's what it looks like on one side, and that's what it looks like on the other. And somehow we've ended up with three big circles there that we'll have to figure out. Um, I don't know where those are coming from. So let's figure that out. Where did you come from? Big circles. Uh, let's see. We're going to go into graphics and turn off the hood, turn on the hood, turn off the front. Oop, it's part of front. Um, see what just happened there, right? I, by, by click. Oh, that's what it is. I duplicated the front. So I don't need to duplicate the front. Um, you know, that's not actually part of one of the sides. So that was a hierarchy mistake that I made when I mapped out all of my stuff. There we go. So that moved rather perfectly the design from one side to the other, except I've messed up my front here somehow. Why don't I have a front anymore? I deleted one of them, but it shouldn't have deleted both of them. Okay, we'll hit control Z here. And what we'll do is we'll drag the front out and put it up here with hood. And so that's weird. I don't know why that happened exactly. I'd have to go back and look at that. But what we're going to do is just basically erase anything that's outside of that bumper, right? Um, and so I'm just going to go like this because if it's, you know, the front it should not have, should not be addressing anything else. So I'm just going to erase anything in these layers that's outside of that 
section, which should fix our problem. And then notice this overspray here. I'm sure that that's going to bite me in a sec. We'll have to look at that. Let's go back and look. All right, fixed it. Um, where's that white overspray at? Well, maybe not. Car looks okay. We still need to paint the back, right? Uh, the white isn't going to work for us. We're probably going to want to do the orange down at the bottom and just sort of continue those lines through with black around the lights. So we'll look at that in just a sec. Um, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and move our logos over too. Now, unfortunately, it's not as easy as just flipping them uh, like we did with the graphics because the logos are often written text. If you just flip the written text, you end up with a mirror image of it. We start the same way. And luckily, we don't have a lot of logos. Some of my paints have got tons and tons of logos. So this becomes a bit of a pain. But what I'm going to do is duplicate this right logo bucket. And I'm going to call that left. And then I'm going to go down here. And it's starting with the Caps one. And then I've got the Hamilton one, right? So what I'm going to do is flip these, um, but not by flipping them, by rotating them. So I'm just going to rotate this 180 degrees, which is going to be wrong because it's at an angle, right? But I'm going to do the same thing with the Hamilton logo, 180, which is going to be fine. And then just like with the, uh, with the graphics layers, I'm going to turn on my wire and pick an anchor point. But I'm going to start by moving both of these up together. And then let's see here. Um, all right, I think the best anchor point is going to be the word precision here. You see how the secondary text is slightly overlapping the one to third line of the wheel well. So let's go up here and make American, in this case, slightly overlap the third line, like so. And that should really closely match up this Hamilton vertically with the other Hamilton. Um, now I'm gonna go to the Caps logo, which is in the wrong place and at the wrong angle, right? but I'm gonna move it individually now that Hamilton's in place. I'm gonna move it individually and take a look at the other one and notice how it's uh, sort of lined with the, the thicker body line here. I'm gonna do that same thing, but first I need to get the rotation correct. So just like we did on that side, I'm gonna move it up a bit and I'm gonna pivot it to make the APPS line up with the, um, with the white accent line there, that, that white pinstripe. And I'm going to move it down a bit. And you can see here that I need to come, I'll turn off my wire for this. You can see that I need to come up maybe one or two clicks on the S, right? So I'm going to rotate again and I'm going to use my fine controls here. Let's see how that looks. That looks about right. And then I'm going to turn on the wire again and bring the whole thing down. And then go revisit just real fast the body line. Yeah, the P is terminating right on that second, like, fat line, uh, which should be about that. So let's take a look. Nice. Okay. I think we've got a, a paint coming along here, kiddos. What I don't like is the way Hamilton is now cut off, right? The N is being hid, hidden by the, uh, the fueling nozzle. So I'm going to see if it looks better if I bring the word Hamilton down in size a little bit to accommodate for that. I'll probably have to move it up on screen, down on car. Uh, actually, that looks... that looks a-okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that though. I'm going to move it down one major click and see if that looks good. Looks better. Uh, maybe up just a tad. Yeah, now we're talking. Okay, I dig it. I dig it. Steer mouse pad. Stop moving around. All right. Let's just quickly do the back. That should be easy. Um, we'll start. We'll go to the graphics area. We'll create a new group called back. Um, and I'm going to do a layer in there. Back black. 
It's like ACDC. Uh, and I'm just going to do a rectangular selection here because this is going to be our base color, basically, of, of this section. And I'm going to paint that black. Okay. Now I'm going to do a selection, and I'll just be rough about it because this part's really, really easy, frankly. Um, and I'm going to choose my off-white and, oh, I meant to create a new layer, sorry, uh, back white. Easy to make that mistake. Paint that, and then we're going to line it up with, we're going to line that up with the crossover. You see, I'm already pretty close, but again, Swiss precision here, kids. We want to get it exact, um, so I'm going to move my this little guy down and let's see how we did. I can turn the wire on and probably shortcut this a bit. Oh, hey, look at that. And look at that. Okay, so we can see here that I messed up transposing my stuff from left to right, right? Um, or from right to left. I messed up because this is telling me that the left orange is lower than the right orange. So because right was what I started with, I'm gonna make this match and then I'm gonna move the whole left side to accommodate and, and, and fix this problem, right? So. Uh, let's move it up a tad. That tells me my initial, um, my initial estimation there might, might've been more correct. Oh, so close. Okay, kind of like, I don't like the way it bubbles up. No, that was correct. Okay, we'll leave it there. Um, and now we'll do an orange one. And then we'll go back over and, and fix the left side of the car. So I'm going to do another new layer, back orange. And I'm going to change to my orange paintbrush and paint that one. And this might actually be perfect already. If anything, it's one or two pixels off. Ooh, just, yeah, just one off. Uh, so we'll move this guy down one click. Should be good. Ooh, one more, one more. What do we think, you guys? Are we getting close? Are we feeling it? Okay, now let's go fix the whole left side, which is apparently off a bit. So I need to just take my whole left graphics um, section and move it up, right, is what we needed to do. See how it's too low for the bumper? So I'm just going to take with the entire left layer group, which is, remember, a parent, right, of a bunch of child layer groups. Take that whole left section and move it up four clicks. And notice how all the various pieces moved along with it. I might need to do a little bit of patching here in a sec. Um, might need to do a little bit of patching. And if so, that's fine. That's part of the game. One more. Okay, so we fixed our problem there but we've probably created a couple of problems elsewhere. Let's see. Well, nothing real visible. Maybe that's just outside of the wire, probably. Let's look. Oh yeah, see these little doodads here? That's just outside of the wire, so that's why it's not rendering on the car. Okay. Now what we'll do is a little bit of logo placement um, in the rear. So. For my personal one, I'm going to put my name back here, but you don't have to. Um, uh, no, obviously not on the one that, that I put on trading paints later. So I think what I'll do is just a Hamilton logo in the back section here. So let's grab, oops, uh, let's go here and grab, hold on, which logo did I have as the hero? What color was it? 
Ah, yeah, that'll be perfect. So I'm going to duplicate my hero again. And in my logos section, I'm going to create yet another group uh, for rear. I'm going to take my copy and drop it in here. And I'm going to hide the hero, which it already is. Uh, rotate our hero copy. Where is it? Oh, I don't have it on. There we go. Rotate that bad boy. Uh, 90 degrees. Rotate and scale it down. Oh, I'm sorry. Not rotate. We don't want to do that um, because the back is not uh, at an angle. So what I'll do is just scale it down in size roughly and then move it up. Oh, that's interesting. So I need to move rear up over our logos and stuff. Let's see if that works. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes you gotta you gotta break some rules on um, on layer stacking because uh, iRacing will have some default ones that sort of supersede a lot of other stuff, and because of that, you have to change your naming conventions from time to time uh, and your your structure of your groups to override what they want to have on top. It's not a big deal. Just means that now my rear lives up here above everything else. Uh, which I'll put it back below the spec map, but nice. Noise. And I don't think I'll put anything on the rear wing. I think I just want this to be a pretty clean car. I'm not even gonna put caps on the back. I think for my personal one, I'll put my name back there. But um, but as far as the trading paints one that I'm going to share, I don't think I will. Okay, let's go do some spec mapping, guys. Um, now, spec map time. Uh, let's make what I want to do here is I think the only thing I want to make reflective in any way, and I and I think I'm going to do more of a matte than reflective, is the white surrounding the door. Maybe the pinstripes, maybe the white pinstripes, but I doubt it. I think I'm just going to mess with just the um, uh, that whitish, that off white on the door. Now, the way that we do that, I'm going to go to this side since we've got better sun. The way that we do that is we need to create a negative space. We need to create a, um, what's the word here? Yeah, negative space, a hole in the spec map to uh, to allow only part of it to be reflective. So I, I'm not going to go into super duper detail here on how this works. Um, I've got a whole separate video for that. It's about an hour long and I go into really deep detail on how spec maps work. For today's purposes, um, what I'm going to do is just do it and, and hopefully you can glean it along the way. I'll explain as I go. But there are two files that work together to make spec maps, spec maps work, right? There's the paint file, which we are, we've created, right? If I go back into uh, my uh, documents, iRacing, uh, paint, and uh, the car here, stock cars, Ford Mustang. We've already created a, a TGA file for the car's paint job. So I'm gonna save my work thus far because we're about to get a little bit complicated. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I've got my most recent version exported, which I just did. Now what I'm gonna do is turn off all my paint stuff. Okay, uh, so I'm going to turn off the whole paintable area, right? That means the only thing left over is that Hamilton logo that I pulled out of the regular area. I'm now going to turn that off too. And then I'm going to go up here to the spec map area and turn it on, right? And you'll notice how everything turned black. So this is a layer that's sitting on top of the car's paint job that is totally black. But here, it's not really black. What that means, uh, the, the colors in this area are measures of re reflectivity or um, uh, and roughness, right? Our red channel, this channel it co uh, covers reflectivity. The green covers roughness. Um, and so I'm gonna give you a quick idea of here of how that works to a degree. But the first thing you wanna do is create a second file that is for the spec map itself. So I'm gonna hit export as, and I'm gonna call it the same thing, except the name of it is gonna have spec underscore in it, right? So car underscore spec underscore your number dot TGA. And that's going to be dropped right in the same folder as everything else. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead and export that, and I'm going to go refresh the car with making no changes to the spec map whatsoever, and you'll see that the car will change pretty substantially. Eh, no, it doesn't. Why didn't it? Well, all black is basically a value of nothing, um, which means I haven't added any additional reflectivity to the car whatsoever. If I go in now and I go to my, my, my black um, channel here, my base paint uh, black, uh, excuse me, um, metallic channel, and I go into the color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero out all of these numbers, right? And think about what's happening there. That's black, right? The color that that's creating is black. So if I change that to 255 across the board, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I made a mistake there. I should only be messing with the... Um, I should only be messing with the top number, right? Um, so if I change that to 255, that makes it red. Now, it's the red layer at its max redness, which basically means um, the red layer at its maximum redness means the most reflective, right? So the car is what color, kids? Um, the car is multiple colors. But what I'm going to do now is make it the most reflective it can possibly be. And oh, hey, Adi, how you doing? Uh, Project Cars 2. Man, I've never played Project Cars 2. I don't I don't know anything about its painting stuff. Um, all of my painting has happened in iRacing. OK, so I've painted this whole layer in completely red, which isn't really red. What that means is maximally reflective, right? Red is not a color here. It's a value of reflectivity. So I'm going to export that again to the spec file, not to the paint file. And let's go look at it again. Maximum reflectivity. So now all of our colors, the orange, the black, everything has got a mirror sheen to it, which is not what I want. It doesn't look bad, right? It's kind of nifty, uh, but it's not what I want. And so what I'm going to do now is try to restrict that, that area to just this spot. Okay, I want just this middle section to be uh, to be reflective, and then I might do my numbers too. That's kind of neat. That'll be tricky though. I think I'll have to change the way my numbers are formatted to where this is a a different color surround. Um, and I think I will because it's really tricky because in iRacing your your numbers are set that number format is set within the um, iRacing deal, right? So you don't get to see it within your painting. So. What I'm going to do now is I need to carve out. I don't want the whole thing to be reflective. I just want this area, right? So what I need to do is change my red to only cover that area on the two doors, right? Which means I need everything else to be a negative space. I need everything else to be not red or not fully reflective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and I'm going to turn back on uh, the paintable area. And I'm going to turn off my spec map so that I can see it, right? And in my paintable area on the right side, what I'm going to do is locate my right door. Okay, I'll do it a little bit roughly. This, this is not the most ideal way to do it, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to pick this area here. to there and I'm going to follow the wheel well around to there to there and then I'm just going to close it right and so now I've got a selection of the shape of the door everybody follow me I've got a I've got the shape of the door selected so I'm going to turn back off the graphics the whole paintable area, actually. I should turn off the whole paintable area. And then go back up to my spec map. And now you can see that I've got that selection located on the spec map. But remember, I want that area to be reflective, not to be unreflective. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another layer up here that's black. Right? Um, or un I'll rename that so that it makes sense unreflective, right? Um, and anything outside of this, 
I want to be unreflective. Okay, so which means what? A value of zero. Zero reflectivity is black as a color. Okay, um, you know, and to, to clarify that, what's white at its most reflective, right? White is sort of an absence of color. And at its most reflective, an absence of color is a mirror. And so here, what I'm doing is saying lack of reflectivity, um, meaning don't add anything more to what iRacing's default is. But I don't want to paint within here. That's the area that I do want reflective. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert my selection so that now when I paint black, I'm painting outside of that instead of inside of it, right? So I'm going to go large on my brush here, and I'm just going to paint black all over the car. But remember, it's not black. It's a value of zero reflectivity. Black is just the sort of placeholder color that we're seeing to represent the value. So now, if I export that back out to my spec map, I should have just reflectivity within that area, right? But I don't want it to be fully chrome. I want this to be sort of matte. And so I'm going to mess with some values here within that area. Um, so I'm going to go back to, to this spot. And I'm going to change my, I'm going to put down my bucket tool. I'm going to grab a color, but instead of it being fully red, right? What I want to do is a bit of green value. I'm going to do like a uh, 150, right? Sort of a halfway number as an experiment and see how it looks. So now that, see how that sort of is matte? It's still sort of shiny, but but uh, sort of satin, I guess, is the word. Um, that's too far, I think. So I'm going to change it back to hmm, 110. Interesting. I kind of dig it. Notice how the 64, like the numbers jacked up. I'm, I'm going to have to change um, some numbering stuff. That's, that's going to be really weird. Um, and I'll fix it before I post it to Trading Paints. It's coming up on race time, though, for Daytona. So I'll be closing down soon. But um, now that I've carved that out, uh, I don't know that I love it with that. I'm going to change that to something lower, like 75. A little less satin. Which, notice what it's doing is just various shades of orange for our eyes. But it's just saying a little bit less reflective, a little bit less reflective, a little bit less reflective. Um, and I think that works. What do you guys think? That work? Or do we like it without the spec map? Um, I, I, frankly, I think I kind of like it without the spec map a little bit more. What's your votes? What do you think, guys? Um, no spec map or spec map? Um, and remember, I would fix the 64s to where it wouldn't be two tone there. But um, do we like the silver inlay, or do we want just the um, just the raw white that we had before? So I'll flip over to the other side. So that's just the white. And that's the silver. White silver. What do you think, guys? Educate me. What looks better? I'm, I'm conflicted. Audie, you like it with the silver, with the, um, with the, the spec map enabled, as long as I patch the number problem. That's your preference. Any other votes? Anybody else? Bryce, Mustafa, Soliman. Because uh, I'm really conflicted on it. I, I, I don't dislike the silver. Maybe it should be chrome. Let's look at chrome again. Maybe Chrome looked better. Again, I need to fix the number, right? But um, maybe Chrome looks better. I 
I don't know. I'm really conflicted. I really like my spec map stuff, but um, I really like the black. Uh, I really like spec maps, but I kind of think I prefer this car native. Um, Bryce, you say white. Well, now I've got a 50-50 vote out there, kids. That doesn't help me. What did it look like again with the whole car? Um, reflective. Just too dark, huh? Like the, the Hamilton branding goes away because it's just not the right shade of orange. But then again, I could make negative spaces for the logos or I could make all the black satin. There's an idea. I could make the black mat and it kind of looks wicked with the chrome Hamilton square. OK, uh, I'm going to I'm going to mess with this. Uh, later. Um, so the uh, Daytona 24 is about to start in about three minutes. And so I'm going to go watch that. Um, and we'll sign off from here. But I appreciate everybody watching and participating. It's been fun. I hope you learned a little bit along the way. Um, I will refine this and get a finished version of it up on uh, Trading Paints uh, for anyone to use who wants to use it. Uh, so thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. Talk to you later.